The Battle of Lake Trasimene was fought when a Carthaginian force under Hannibal ambushed a Roman army commanded by Gaius Flaminius on 21 June 217 BC, during the Second Punic War. It took place on the north shore of Lake Trasimene, to the east of Cortona, and resulted in a heavy defeat for the Romans. The First Punic War was fought between Carthage and Rome, the two main powers of the Western Mediterranean in the 3rd century BC struggled for supremacy primarily on the Mediterranean island of Sicily and its surrounding waters, and also in North Africa. The war lasted for 23 years, from 264 to 241 BC, until the Carthaginians were defeated. The Treaty of Lutatius was signed by which Carthage evacuated Sicily and paid an indemnity of 3,200 talents over 10 years. Four years later Rome seized Sardinia and Corsica on a cynical pretense and imposed a further 1,200 talent indemnity. The seizure of Sardinia and Corsica by Rome and the additional indemnity fueled resentment in Carthage. Shortly after Rome's breach of the treaty the leading Carthaginian general Hamilcar Barca led many of his veterans on an expedition to expand Carthaginian holdings in southeast Iberia, this was to become a monarchy, a autonomous Barsid fiefdom. Carthage gained silver mines, agricultural wealth, manpower, military facilities such as shipyards and territorial depth, which encouraged it to stand up to future Roman demands. Hamilcar ruled as a viceroy and was succeeded by his son-in-law, Hasdrubal, in the early 220s BC and then his son, Hannibal, in 221 BC. In 226 BC the Ebro Treaty was agreed, specifying the Ebro River as the northern boundary of the Carthaginian sphere of influence. A little later Rome made a separate treaty of association with the city of Saguntum, well south of the Ebro. In 218 BC a Carthaginian army under Hannibal besieged, captured and sacked Saguntum. In spring 219 BC, Rome declared war on Carthage. It was the long-standing Roman procedure to elect two men each year. against the Carthaginian cavalry at the Battle of Ticinus. He was soundly beaten and personally wounded. The Romans retreated to near Placentia, fortified their camp and awaited reinforcement. The Roman army in Sicily under Sempronius Longus was redeployed to the north and joined with Scipio's force. After a day of heavy skirmishing in which the Romans gained the upper hand, Sempronius was eager for a battle. Numidian cavalry lured Sempronius out of his camp and onto ground of Hannibal's choosing, where the Battle of the Trebia took place. Fresh Carthaginian cavalry routed the outnumbered Roman cavalry, and Carthaginian light infantry outflanked the Roman infantry. A previously hidden Carthaginian force attacked the Roman infantry in the rear. Most of the Roman units then collapsed and most Romans were killed or captured by the Carthaginians, but 10,000 under Sempronius maintained formation and fought their way out to the safety of Placentia. Recognizing the Carthaginians as the dominant force in Cisalpine Gaul, 
Gallic recruits flocked to them and their army grew to 60,000. When news of the defeat reached Rome it initially caused panic. But this calmed once Sempronius arrived, to preside over the consular elections in the usual manner. Gnaeus Servilius Geminus and Gaius Flaminius were selected and Sempronius then returned to Placentia to see out his term to 15th of March. The Carthaginian cavalry isolated both Placentia and Cremona, but these could be supplied by boat. The consuls-elect recruited further legions, both Roman and from Rome's Latin allies, reinforced Sardinia and Sicily against the possibility of Carthaginian raids or invasion, placed garrisons at Tarentum and other places for similar reasons, built a fleet of 60 quinqueromes, and established supply depots at Ariminum and Aricium in Etruria in preparation for marching north later in the year. Two armies, of four legions each, two Roman and two allied, but with stronger than usual cavalry contingents, were formed. One was stationed at Aricium, and one on the Adriatic coast, they would be able to block Hannibal's possible advance into central Italy, and be well positioned to move north to operate in Cisalpine Gaul. In spite of their losses, the Romans fielded 22 legions in 217 BC, 10 more than in 218 BC. The Carthaginians were now recognized as the dominant force in Cisalpine Gaul and most of the Gallic tribes sent plentiful supplies and recruits to his camp. The Carthaginians suffered from a shortage of food throughout the winter. There were only minor operations during the winter and most of the surviving Romans were evacuated down and assigned to one of the two new armies being formed, while the flow of Gallic support for the Carthaginians became a flood and their army grew to 60,000. In spring 217 BC, the Carthaginians crossed the Apennines unopposed, taking a difficult but unguarded route and so surprising the Romans. The Carthaginians moved south into Etruria, plundering the plentiful stocks of food and looting, raising the villages and small towns and killing out of hand all adult males encountered. Hannibal learned that one Roman army was at Aricium and was eager to bring it to battle, before it could be reinforced, Hannibal surmised the Romans would have another army on the east coast. Once he learned that he had been bypassed, Flaminius, the commander of the Roman army at Arentium, set off in pursuit. As they passed through territory devastated by the Carthaginians there would have been a feeling of military failure and humiliation, the army existed in order to protect its homeland, and that the small farmers of the legions and their landowner officers would have taken this despoliation as an intense provocation. The Romans gained the impression, possibly fostered by Hannibal, that the Carthaginians were fleeing south before them, and according to Polybius anticipated an easy victory. The Romans were pursuing so rapidly they were unable to carry out proper reconnaissance, but they closed less than a day's march behind their opponents. The Carthaginians bypassed the Roman garrison city of Cortona and on 20 June marched along the shore of Lake Trisimi. Hannibal decided this was a suitable spot to turn and fight. Most male Roman citizens were eligible for military service and would serve as infantry, a better off minority providing a cavalry component. Traditionally, when at war the Romans would raise two legions, each of 4,200 infantry and 300 cavalry. Approximately 1,200 of the infantry, poorer or younger men unable to afford the armor and equipment of a standard legionary, served as javelin armed skirmishers, known as flights, they carried several javelins, which would be thrown from a distance, a short sword, and a three feet shield. The balans were equipped as heavy infantry, with body armor, a large shield and short thrusting swords, they were divided into three ranks, of which the front rank also carried two javelins, while the second and third ranks had a thrusting spear instead. Both legionary subunits and individual legionaries fought in relatively open order. An army was usually formed by combining a Roman legion with a similarly sized and equipped legion provided by their Latin allies, allied legions usually had a larger attached complement of cavalry than Roman ones. At Lake Trasimene the Romans fielded four legions, two Roman and two made up of allies, for a total of approximately 25,000 men. Carthage usually recruited foreigners to make up its army. Many would be from North Africa which provided several types of fighters including, close order infantry equipped with large shields, helmets, short swords and long thrusting spears, javelin armed light infantry skirmishers, close order heavy cavalry, carrying spears, and light cavalry skirmishers who threw javelins from a distance and avoided close combat. Both Iberia and Gaul provided experienced infantry, unarmored troops who would charge ferociously, but had a reputation for breaking off if a combat was protracted. Most of the Carthaginian infantry would fight in a tightly packed formation known as a phalanx, usually forming two or three lines. Specialist slingers were recruited from the Balearic Islands. The numbers fielded by the Carthaginians are not known, but an approximation can be made. 
Hannibal had arrived in Italy with 20,000 infantry and 6,000 cavalry, and had fought at the Trebia in December 218 BC with 31,000 and 11,000 respectively. 216 BC at Cannae the Carthaginians, not having been reinforced since crossing the Apennines, had 40,000 infantry and 10,000 cavalry, it is usually assumed that more than this fought at Lake Trasimene in any event, the Carthaginian army was considerably larger than the Roman. Shoreline has changed since, but at the time of the battle the road led along the north shore of the lake, then turned south, still along the lake shore, before climbing away from the lake through a defile. The north of the road were a range of low hills which came closer to the lake towards the east, and the defile, steadily reducing the open ground between them and the lake. The Carthaginians made camp where the hills were closest to the lake, near the defile. This was clearly visible to the Romans. Once it was dark, Hannibal sent the various components of his army on night marches behind the hills to the north of the lake to take up positions from which they could ambush the Roman army. Night marches are notoriously difficult and often result in units becoming lost in the dark or alerting their enemy. The Carthaginians avoided both of these and took up positions on the reverse slopes of the hills. The Carthaginian cavalry were positioned furthest to the west, the North Italian Gallic infantry to their east and the experienced African and Iberian infantry furthest east, relatively close to their camp. Modern historians place the bulk of the large number of Carthaginian light infantry either around the defile and its mouth or as reinforcing the Gauls in the center of the Carthaginian line. On the morning of June 21 the Romans set off very early and marched eastward along the northern edge of the lake. Ancient accounts state that a thick morning mist near the lake limited visibility, but some modern historians have suggested that this was either invented or exaggerated to excuse the Romans' subsequent unreadiness for battle. As Flaminius was expecting battle, the Romans probably marched in three parallel columns, which was their habit prior to a battle as this was relatively quicker to wheel into a battle line compared with a single line of march. This swiftness was relative, as forming an army up in battle order was a complicated affair which would take several hours under any circumstances. The Romans would have had a screen of light infantry out to their front and, to a lesser extent, their flank, as skirmishing was usual before a battle with the army's respective light troops shielding their close order colleagues while they formed up. However, Flaminius did not send out cavalry scouts to make a more distant reconnaissance, this was not unusual, Roman armies of the time rarely did so. The leading Romans made contact with the most easterly of the Carthaginians, probably some of the African or Iberian close order infantry, and the signal was given for all of the Carthaginians to advance, possibly by the sounding of trumpets. According to some ancient accounts the Romans could hear these signals on their flank and to their rear, but could not see their enemy, which caused confusion. It would have taken several hours for the Romans to convert their formation into a battle array, even this had been facing the direction expected. As it was, with the Carthaginians attacking unexpectedly from the flank and the rear, possibly with poor visibility, there was no chance to form even a rudimentary fighting line. Some Romans fled, others clustered into groups of various sizes, ready to engage the enemy on all sides. The fugitives and many of the impromptu Roman groups were rapidly cut down or captured. Other groups of Romans put up a stiff fight, especially in the center where the attacking Gauls suffered heavy casualties before beating down the trapped Romans after three hours of heavy combat. Flaminius was completely surprised and provided no effective leadership, Livy, who otherwise paints a poor picture of him, records that Flaminius was active and valiant in attempting to rally his army and organize a defense before being cut down by a Gaul. The trapped portion of the Roman army collapsed. Men attempted to swim across the lake and drowned, others waded out until the water was up to their necks and the Carthaginian cavalrymen swam their horses out to chop at the exposed heads. The trap failed to close on the 6,000 Romans at the front of the column, who were possibly also the Romans most prepared for battle, and they pushed their way out of the defile against little opposition. Realizing that they could not effect the battle behind them, they marched on. Later in the day they were surrounded by pursuing Carthaginians and surrendered to Maharbal on the promise of being disarmed and freed, with a garment of peace according to Livy. However, Hannibal disapproved and only applied this to the Allied captives while selling the Romans into slavery. Many of the Carthaginian infantry, especially the Libyans, equipped themselves with captured Roman armor. The ancient sources are unclear as to the fate of the approximately 25,000 Romans known to have been engaged. According to the contemporary analyst and senator Fabius Pictor 15,000 were killed and 10,000 scattered. Polybius has 15,000 killed and most of the rest captured. 
Polybius reports losses of 1,500 killed for the Carthaginians, most of them Gauls, while Livy gives 2,500 killed and many who died of their wounds. The second Roman army, originally positioned on the Adriatic coast and commanded by Gnaeus Geminus, had been marching west, intending to join up with Flaminius. Unaware that the destruction of Flaminius's army had left the Carthaginians able to maneuver freely, Geminus's entire cavalry force of 4,000 was scouting ahead when it was surprised by the Carthaginians a few days after Trismi. Nearly 2,000 were killed in the first clash, the balance were surrounded and captured the next day. Geminus withdrew his infantry back to Ariminum on the Adriatic. The prisoners were badly treated if they were Romans, the Latin allies who were captured were well treated by the Carthaginians and many were freed and sent back to their cities, in the hope that they would speak well of Carthaginian martial prowess and of their treatment. Hannibal hoped some of these allies could be persuaded to defect. The Carthaginians continued their march through Etruria, then Umbria, to the Adriatic coast, continuing their devastation and plundering of the territory they crossed and the killing of any adult males captured, the Gauls were especially brutal in this respect. The Carthaginian soldiers accumulated so much booty they had to cease looting because they could not carry any more. The army then marched south into Apulia, in the hope of winning over some of the ethnic Greek and Italic city-states of southern Italy. News of the defeat caused a panic in Rome. Quintus Fabius Maximus Verrucosus was elected dictator by the Roman Assembly and adopted the Fabian strategy of avoiding pitched conflict, relying instead on low-level harassment to wear the invader down, until Rome could rebuild its military strength. Hannibal was left largely free to ravage Apulia for the next year, until the Romans ended the dictatorship and elected Pallas and Varro as consuls. These more aggressive commanders offered battle to Hannibal, who accepted and won a victory at Cannae. Subsequently the Carthaginians campaigned in southern Italy for a further 13 years. In 204 BC Publius Cornelius Scipio, the son of the Scipio who had been wounded at Ticinus, invaded the Carthaginian homeland and defeated the Carthaginians in two major battles and won the allegiance of the Numidian kingdoms of North Africa. Hannibal and the remnants of his army were recalled from Italy to confront him. They met at the Battle of Zama in October 202 BC and Hannibal was decisively defeated. As a consequence Carthage agreed a peace treaty which stripped it of most of its territory and power, 